So I've been admiring a number of World War II maps on the David Rumsey collection, and this one in particular from Time Magazine caught my attention. I really like this border over here, and in today's video, I'm gonna play around with recreating this look, essentially putting symbols or icons along a path. This is the best technique I've found to create this type of visual, and it requires no more than two layers. So I have a little base map here just to give some visual context, and what I'm gonna be doing is just creating a quick element to visualize an invasion from the north and the east end of Ukraine here. So for the first step, I'm just gonna grab the pen tool over here. I click on the word fill. I'm gonna turn the fill off completely because I'm just drawing a path. I'm gonna click on the word stroke and turn on solid color. And I will set the color to, you know, like a red. And then I'll go to the width and I'll set the width to maybe five pixels. And I'll come down here and just quickly draw a path right outside of the borders here. And now I wanna just animate the path to cross over these borders on the east and the north end. Well, first I'll rename this layer, I'll just call it Invasion. I'll open this up, and under the shape group, you have path, and so this is what I wanna keyframe. So I'm gonna click on this, my playhead's at the beginning, this is the start of our animation. I'm gonna take it to maybe the four second mark, and then I'll go back here and click on here. So I still have the pen tool selected. Now, moving in and manipulating a path, you have to know the, like, the keyboard shortcuts. So you, if you hit the G key and hold shift, it will allow you to like click individual ones. But be, be careful because if you grab one and then you click on another one, it can close your path, which is not what I wanna do. So I'm gonna control Z. So if you grab an end one, you might need to switch over to the selection tool and then you know, I can start to move these. I'm just gonna kind of change some of the Bezier paths here. Have this one come in like this. This one can come in all the way over here. And this last one, maybe something like that. So let's see what this looks like. It's kind of like down and dirty, super simple. Little too simple. I want a little bit more. So I'm gonna hold the shift key again and maybe make this a little more bent out like that. We have our little invasion path. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to add one symbol spread out and duplicated across the path. So we're going to do this via one text element. So we're going to create some text and then we're going to have it follow the path. So I'm going to go grab the text tool and this is really the key. I'm going to click anywhere here and I'm going to go and let's start with the X. Let's just make a bunch of X's across. So I'm just going to type X and it's this yellow color, so let's go match our red. I'm gonna grab this one again and just copy the hex here of this. Go back to the text, and over here in the properties panel, click on the color, and I'll paste that hex in there. So now we have these red X's, so I want these to go along the path. So how do I do it? Well, if you open up the text right here, you have a little parameter group called path options, and you can select a path. There's a little drop down menu, but it doesn't allow me to pick any path. What I need to do is draw a mask path along the text layer. So to do that, I grab the pen tool. With the text selected, I just simply draw out any path, just two vertices. And now it will allow me to select mask one. So I'm gonna select mask one, and now you can see we have our X's along our path here. And you can see the mask down here. If you open up this, you have a mask path. So the key to make this work is we're going to attach the mask path to the path of the shape layer. And you do that via this property pick whip here. So I need to go back down to the path, um, shape layer, type in path just to quickly and nicely bring up the path here. And now watch this, I just grab the property pick whip of the mask path and I want it to follow the invasion path. And now it snaps right here and you see it's basically has the path, but now it's offset. So that's simply a position problem. To fix that, I need to parent the text to the shape layer. And right over here in the column, I have parent and link. So I'm gonna grab this parent pick whip here of the text and I'm gonna attach it or, or grab the invasion. But the important part here is you have to hold the shift key because shift key will overwrite the parameters. If I just attach it here, it's not gonna do anything. So let me undo that and I will do it again, but I'm holding the shift key. Now when I release, it snaps perfectly to there. So how can we customize them? Well, there are a ton of ways we can customize this. So open up your text element, go down to, let's close the mask, go down to path options and look over here. You have all these, which just give you a ton of cool options. First and most important is force alignment. If I turn that on, that will perfectly 
put all of my X's along my path. So now I've got this cool path. You can see that they are currently perpendicular to the path. So even if I go, actually I'll grab the invasion path again, hit U for the keyframes, hit the G key. And if I grab one of these vertices again, watch what happens, watch how dynamic this is. I'm gonna move this over and you see if I move this. So these are moving perpendicular with the path, which is just awesome, it's so cool. If I toggle perpendicular to path off, you'll see that all the X's just basically face up and down. So maybe that, that can be a look that you wanna go for. So, but that's not the look I want right now. So I'm gonna switch it back. You can play with the margins and just you know move these around and all of these parameters are keyframeable. The real power comes when you go over here and you add and animate. So like right now, I want to center these X's up, so I have the middle right along the line. I could do that over here in the properties panel and just mess with this little parameter, the, the baseline shift. I could start to move this around, and that, that could be cool, but that, that's a little harder to animate that parameter. So I'm gonna undo that. Down here in the text element, I can click on animate and do enable per character 3D. Once that's done, I'm gonna click on this menu again, and I'm going to add a position parameter, and now I can essentially quickly mess with the position parameters of all of these. So if I just go and grab the Y parameter and start to move it, you'll see it starts to shift. And the beauty of this is, is that it's keyframeable. So I can hold control and like fine tune this. Let's just kind of eyeball it. So now we got this. This could be a cool like, you know, like visual for if, you, if you're doing, you know, conflict or you, this can be a static element as well. And what's cool is you, you connect them and then you can move them around whatever. They don't have to be animated. Animated is just like the icing on the cake. Now, this is not the visual that we want. This is pretty cool, but we're just using text here. The real cool, powerful thing is when you use uh, Unicode or like glyph icons, and we can do that via wingdings. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, wingdings. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm on a PC, so I'm gonna go over and to properties, and I'm gonna search uh, wingdings, and I have wingdings one, two, and three. And I'm pretty sure I tested this out on my MacBook Air and I had Wingdings 3 available on there and it worked. Mac OS is not the same with PC when it comes to those fonts. However, um, you should be able to use Wingdings. Now, what I do is to basically have a reference for the Wingdings because I don't have all the Wingdings fonts memorized. So what you do is you come over here and just Google Wingdings 3 and one of your first, you know, the first kind of image you find here is gonna be a quick reference cheat sheet. And check these out, I have these arrows over here. So I'm gonna grab one of these arrows, so lowercase q, I'll come back here, and let me just zoom in so you can see what's gonna happen here. Actually, they already changed to this arrow here, which I guess, I guess that's x, is that symbol. So if I go back and I just type in lowercase q, and I start to type, I'm typing in a bunch here, it's gonna update. There we go. So now I got a bunch of Q's in here. I'll go back to my animator and now check it out. I have this cool, I just gotta switch this. And now I finally have that visual. Now it looks a little weird here with these kind of moving, they're not moving perfectly down. So I could change this visual entirely. I could come back down here and let's say we don't wanna keyframe the actual path. I can hit the U key and let's just think, Let's just move this over for now. I'll go back to this here, and let's add a keyframe for our per character, and I'll bring this out. And now let's say we just wanna move these symbols. We want these symbols moving in. So now that can be a little bit of a more dynamic move here. So this could be the existing front line, and then now we have them moving in. All right, so hopefully some things are clicking in your head and you can see how incredibly powerful this is. I mean, I could do a loop animation with this and do an opacity scale and have a really cool looping animation. And since this is attached to a path, you can actually attach this to the path of one of your country shape layers. So if you wanna see that tutorial, I'm gonna create it over on my Patreon as an exclusive tutorial. I'm gonna go into and basically add these to the border of one of the countries in geo layers. So if you'd like to see that, if you're a geo layers fan, uh, I'm gonna create that over on my Patreon for my tier two and tier three patrons. So if you wanna go see that, um, please go sign up for Patreon and I will release that this month, November 2023. It's gonna be great. Again, this technique is really, really exciting. I'm. When I discovered this, I, I, I seriously spent a week testing out all different types of techniques of how to put 
shapes and symbols along a path to make where you could animate it, you could move it, and it could be, you know, just totally customizable. Bang my head against the desk for probably a week straight testing out various techniques that were just like pre-comping, duplicating, looping, uh, value at time, just, just crazy expressions that I could not figure it out. Then I figured out this technique and just the fact that it's two layers in a text and then it opens up all these text animators. You know, I used to hate text animators, but using text animators with wingdings, it's so, so crazy to think about that, but so powerful. And I can only imagine if you create, I'm probably gonna do this a little bit later on, is create my own custom font. Because if you create your own custom font with like iconography of whatever you want, say you're doing like um, uh, some specific war, you could have custom made icons, build your own font, build the reference cheat sheet for your font, and then just use the text animators to animate it. I really wanted to keep this tutorial in one of my premium courses, but um, but here it is. So. Uh, Actually, if you'd like to uh, sign up for a newsletter, if you're like a map fanatic, I'm thinking about creating another newsletter that's like just for map fanatics and I have another course, probably gonna have two more premium courses coming out next year. And uh, I'm gonna be talking about techniques like this and I'm gonna be going like, I'm gonna be taking ideas like this and just going crazy with them, creating some crazy visuals that I've never seen um, um, really being done anywhere else. So if you wanna check that out, I'm gonna leave a link to like a newsletter, little sign up thing that you can, um, go sign up for and it's just for hardcore map map folks and if you want to be um, get a heads up about my upcoming courses like what they're going to be focusing on the prices when they're going to be released uh, go sign up for that down in the video description also if you're unaware I have a GeoLayers 3 masterclass that's already been released it's the first course I've ever done um, people seem to be responding to it quite well I'll link to that in the video description as well also I'm rambling at this point but I'm working for felt maps full time now and I'm creating content for their YouTube channel and we just released felt 2.0 insane um, their their mission or, or our mission at felt is to make map making effortless for everyone and they're definitely accomplishing that mission and they just released a bunch of cool tools uh, felt 2.0 so go check that out I released a video on that I'll link to that in the video description as well go subscribe my job is to build up the, uh, the uh, social channels so help me out go check out felt see ya